Hey everyone, Justin here. I'll be walking you through WingUsoft. In this video, I'll be using WingUsoft version 3. If you have annotations turned on on the left hand side, you should be able to see the full agenda of this video and skip to any of the parts that you are interested in. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, first let's go through how to actually install WingUsoft. You go to wingupro.com to the download section. If the domain name expires, this is Google site, so it would just be sites.google.com slash WinUPro instead. And in the download section at the top will always be the latest versions here. You can get the .zip file if you don't want to install anything and just use a standalone application. You can download that, or you can download the setup file. You can just click View, which will take you to Google Drive. And you click Download, and you'll see this warning and this shows it can't scan it for viruses because it's over 25 megabytes. You just hit download anyway if you like. And the reason why this takes you to Google Drive instead of just a direct download like the zip file is because Google Sites only allows 100 megabytes of space and the exe file is about 50 so that would be taking more than half of the space. So once you have those downloaded you can, for the .zip file, you can just open it and extract it to wherever you want to run the application. And inside that folder you have the winusoft.exe, but before you do that you're going to want to install the SCP driver by launching this. And we're not really interested in the Bluetooth driver, we just need the configure service. I already have that installed. If you prefer to use the installer and you're upgrading, in other words you already have WingUsoft installed, then you should probably uninstall it just for good measure. You can do that by going to the install location and just opening install 000.exe. It'll open this if you want, but just hit exit because you don't want to delete that. You, probably, you can delete your preferences to ensure everything works properly. And then you just run the installer this warning will pop up because it's not digitally signed. Just you can hit run anyway. The welcome wizard will come up. Hit next. Choose an install location. Choose what you want to install. The Scarlet Crush production driver is for emulating X input. So if you don't, if that's not installed, you need to install it. Otherwise, when you soft can't accomplish what it, it's purposed for and the Xbox 360 controller driver you will need for Windows XP, Vista, and 7. If you use the .zip version, you might need to install those if they're not already installed. Again, when you saw full function properly, if those aren't installed, there are links to those in the winupro.com downloads page. So just click Next. If you want to make a Start Menu folder, you can, or you can click Don't Create if you don't want to and you can create a desktop icon if you'd like. If everything looks good, just hit install. It will copy over the necessary files that it needs, then it'll run the installers that it needs to. Again, you don't need the Bluetooth driver for the SCP driver installs. I already have it installed, so I'll just hit exit. And then it'll load the Xbox 360 dri controller driver installation. I already have this, so I don't need it. Most Windows 10 um, computers don't need that, but if you're running into issues, you might want to install it anyway. Once it's done, you can choose to launch WinUsoft. And this is what it looks like open for the first time. And the first thing we're going to want to do is add some controllers. And you can do that by how you add any other Bluetooth device to your computer, except when you get to the pin part, just skip it. Or if you want to pair your controller to Windows so that when you press a button when the controller is off, it automatically tries to connect to Windows much like it does with the Wii U, you're going to want to click this button over here that says Sync. And this method only works for the Microsoft Bluetooth stack. If you don't have that stack installed, it will show a warning message here. So you just take your controller and press the Sync button on the back of it. And then when you saw it will automatically search for controllers, and once it finds something Nintendo, it will attempt to pair that device. You might get this driver installed here. It's not super important, but go ahead and let it install as well. You can test that your controller is connected by hitting the ID. 
and if the LEDs do that little display, then you know it's working. Just to show that again, there we go. And you can pair other controllers as well, such as the Wii Remote. Again, you hit the sync icon button, it starts looking for controllers, hit the sync icon or button on your controller, and let that connect. And there it is. This is a newer Wiimote, this is a Wii Remote TR um, model, so it shows up as a Pro Controller because they have the same product ID. Just to make sure that it is the right controller, just hit the ID button again. Don't worry about this icon, I will show you how that resolves in just a minute. So to connect your controller as a 360 controller, you click on this 360 looking icon and you can choose the controller to attach it to. You're going to want to attach these in the order that you want them, so don't attach two or three or four first, always go with the first one first. Uh, this is because if you click three here, Windows won't necessarily look at it as controller number three, it will look at it as controller number one. Sometimes one and two are interchangeable, but it's always best just to go with the one that you want first. And then once you do that, the LED, if it's not already set, will go to the set one. So if I hit controller two here, you can see the LED on the Wii remote goes to position two, and you see that the icon um, changed and just like I said it was. The name is still the same, but I will show you how to change that in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at the couple of application settings we have for WinUsoft. We have the ability to auto start the program when Windows starts, to start the program minimized anytime you launch it. Minimized as in minimized to the tray, not to the taskbar. Use auto refresh, this just means it looks for controllers when there are currently no controllers available. Greedy mode, this is what most people look at as the Dark Souls fix. This only works on certain versions of Windows. So if it does not work on your versions of Windows, it'll be easy to tell. I will show you. If I click on Greedy mode, and I close this, and I try to attach it, nothing happens. That means my version of Windows does not support it. So this won't fix issues caused by the operating system itself um, but what this does is when you attach a controller like this it tells the operating system not to allow any other controllers or sorry any other programs to access that device therefore hiding it from other programs such as Dark Souls so that Dark Souls will only see the Xbox 360 controller and not the underlying controller that you're actually using and there's also this Microsoft Bluetooth option here, which is, this will be checked if your computer is using Blue, Microsoft Bluetooth stack. Uncheck it if you're using the Toshiba stack. And then we have the set default calibration here. Uh, that's for whenever you load a controller, you can change what the calibration settings are. And we'll go over calibration settings in a moment. But here's your options, and you can just hit save or clear if you don't want any of those to be done. And then at the bottom we just have the version number which is you can reference if you ever run into any issues. Now let's take a look at mapping our Pro Controller here to inputs of the Xbox 360 controller. To do that you just click the configure icon and this window will open showing you what button is mapped to what and by default you have home as the guide button yeah, and you have all these others where X is X, Y is Y. A is A, B is B. Personally, I like to flip my X and Y buttons because I'm used to having Y at the top. And for some reason, I don't have an issue with A being in a different position as the A on the 360 controller because usually I read A and then I press A. But in these cases, I don't. I just react. I don't know. That's how I am. So to do that, you just click on whatever button you want over here. So if I go to Y and then click X, now you can see that these two are now switched. The analog sticks can be set individually per direction and the cl middle click is just highlight the middle portion of the control. This is because if you have say a stubborn fighting game that only uses the analog stick as input you could take the d-pad and you can remap the input to 
to that of an analog stick direction by direction. Or say you have a game where up is up and down is down and there is no inversion and because you prefer to play inverted so you can individually map those so you can force it to be inverted even though the game may not support it. So if you'd like to apply you just hit the apply button you can click the default button to reassign everything back to the default values. You can save the profile as a WSP file, Windows Soft, WinSoft profile, and you can also load them here. You also have the option to click to assign something to nothing if you really don't want that button to do anything. And just to demonstrate, if I press the home button, you can see that this little game bar question pops up, which is the default action of the guide button for Xbox 360 controller whenever you're running a program. Wii remotes are assigned in a very similar way. They also support extensions, and it's always best to have the extension plugged in before you attach the controller, but they are switchable, switchable on the fly as well. So if you hit the configure, up pops the window with the Wii Remote Configuration, and again, same as before, you just click on the input that you want to change the assignment to. And by default, 1 is A, A and 2 is B, and then A is X, and B is Y. I know. <laughs> we also have the IR pointer um, able to be assigned. It can be assigned to anything. By default, it's set to nothing. You will need a sensor bar in order to use those assignments. We also have the accelerometer. We have a shake in each direction, which is just fast movement, and then we have tilts. Um, tilting in Z is not really useful, so that's why there is no assignment there. Z the Z axis is simply an indicator if it's face button side up or upside down. So tilt in the Y direction is like this, it's your pitch. And the role is if you want to be playing, say, Mario Kart, or if you're holding it this direction, it's that way. Same thing. Both assigned to X. Nunchuck has it similarly, where this is the default position, and then it's the same as the Wii Remote. And when you finish choosing your assignments, just hit Apply, Default, or Cancel. And WinUsoft also supports the other various extensions, like the Classic Controller, when you hit the configuration, you can still set assignments to the Wii Remote, and you also have the Classic Controller with analog shoulders. And you can use the Classic Controller Pro as well. Same thing, just Classic Controller Pro with digital buttons. also use devices that are like classic controllers such as the Hori pad or the PG, PDP battle pad. The difference between the two is the Hori battle pad, or sorry, the Hori pad, this one, has digital shoulder buttons and the PDP one has analog shoulder buttons. Although interesting enough, this one simulates the classic controller which has analog triggers, but everything's 100% when you hit the digital button. And the PDP fight pad, which has um, more of a, it has an analog feel trigger to it, but registers as a classic controller pro, which only has digital buttons, and they don't act until you press it all the way down. Very strange, not sure why they both chose to do that. It seems to me they should chose the opposite of that. Another third party controller that has been confirmed working is the very strange pro controller U, which is a Wii remote inside also jam-packed with the classic controller. Um, so these work, this is the, these are digital input. Um, strangely enough they also click, but they emulate buttons one and two I think. Again this isn't a pro controller, it's a Wii remote with a classic controller. Just make sure on the back, if you have one of these, to keep this mode in controller mode, not in Wii remote mode if you want to use all these face buttons to what they can do. Switching back and forth isn't detected in WinUsoft. 
Um, these you can switch, however, the tilt sensor, though I'm not sure why you would want to. I believe custom is the, strangely, the normal way as opposed to normal, where this is tilting X and this is the Y axis. Now let's take a look at the controller properties. Just click that icon. And because I know it's bugging everyone, we will call this the Wii Remote Luigi. So you can rename the device to whatever your nickname is, which will appear here and do that for every device. Um, we have the auto connect controller automatically assign it to controllers one through four or whatever is available first. You can use a default profile by just hitting this button. Uh, you can change the rumble intensity. For pro controllers, I usually set it to high or maximum because they're a little less um, less sensitive than the Wii remote. And then calibration options, you have the default, minimum, moderate, extra, and you can do a custom. The default calibration is usually what's expected. Minimum if you want a smaller dead zone, larger range, moderate for larger dead zones, or if the range from, say, the center to full left or full right on a joystick or any other axis isn't quite going all the way. Extra is for even larger dead zones. Now let's take a look at what custom calibration looks like. So we have this and we have instructions to walk you through how to pretty much get a so-called auto calibration. For pro controllers at first you just leave the joysticks at the start, then you move them both around in full circles. And then to get the dead zone, you kind of put your finger on it and move it around without actually purposely putting it into one of the directions, which will give you some values here. And then you can increase that dead zone if you feel like it's activating a certain distance too soon. Um, if you feel like the input's not going all the way when you have the joystick set in a direction, pressed all the way, then you're going to want to move the minimum and the maximum closer to the center. So that would mean clicking up on the minimum and lower on the maximum. And then when you're happy with all of that, or if you're not happy, you can hit cancel, you can hit done to apply it, and then you can hit save to save your calibration settings. For the, for the Wii remote, it's a similar process except for the anal uh, for the accelerometers, so it has again it has instructions at the top here. Center should be 127. That's normal, but if it's not on your device, no worry. That's why there's calibration settings. You whenever you rotate the Wii remote, you're going to want to do it slowly. And again, the for dead zones on accelerometers, there is none by default, but you can set one manually if you like. Or the y-axis, it's face down, and then standing up and on its end, just like that. And for the z-axis, it's standing up on its extension port. Again, the z-axis is mainly for determining if the Wii remote is right side up or upside down. We don't really use it too much in here, mainly just for that shake option. And then we also have the IR pointer bounding box dead zone. So if you want the center of this dead zone to be um, more to the left or right of the screen, you would just increase these values. The maximum is 1023, so uh, adjust it accordingly. If you, and if you want a wider or and or taller dead zone, you would adjust these values as well. And if you only want to calibrate the Wii remote, you would just hit done and then it's over. But if you want to calibrate an extension as well, you can just plug in that extension and the calibration process will again start over. Uh, for nun the nunchuck, you want the joystick to be parallel to the ground, like so. And then for rolling, you just kind of go left and right. And then you can set a dead zone if you like, the axis up and down, or sorry, for uh, 
the y-axis you have to hit center and then it's tilt up and down by default the dead zone 16 because the you usually shake it a little bit when you're using the nunchuck if you're going to use axis assignments and this you want the joystick parallel to the ground next and then you just want to return to its position and flip it upside down as well and that's it for the nunchuck For the classic controller, it's very similar to the Pro Controller with the addition of the analog triggers. We just leave everything sitting there as it is, and we rotate both sticks around in full circles. You can then you just leave the joystick around and kind of move it around, and you can set the dead zones themselves by yourself. Something to note about the classic controller is that the right analog stick has a shorter range than the left. The right usually goes up to about 32 and the left to 64. So the dead zones will probably be a little bit different. They should be shorter on the right axis and maybe a little bit larger, but both significantly lower than what the Pro Controller is. And then for the left triggers, uh, oh, I forgot to do that part. You're supposed to put it all the way down on both sides so now my minimums and maximums are quite messed up so I would in that case I could skip and cancel or I can manually set these up anyways um, if you want to keep going you can the last supported extension is the classic controller pro we don't currently support um, musical instruments like the guitar hero guitar or anything yet. So it's the same thing, just keep joysticks back and then rotate them around and then try to automatically fill out the dead zones. But these are usually pretty simple since the range is so short you probably want at least uh, one or two in each side. Um, but it's all up to you. Some people like larger dead zones and especially if you're trying to emulate a keyboard key, you're going to want a larger dead zone. And just hit done when you're done, and then save to save it. And so just a few other things to go over here. This big X icon is to detach the controller so that when you soft stops talking to it and it releases the data stream. And this multiple X icon will detach all attached controllers. This icon over here is whatever the last known extension of the controller when you soft can't know what the controller is until we actually connect to it but it will remember what that icon was if for whatever reason your controller is not acting like the controller it's supposed to be you can right click this and choose a different controller that's just very last resort and then reset back to auto detect what it is this green icon up here is just to refresh this is device list if you connect a new controller outside of the program and then it'll also auto connect any controllers that are set to auto connect. Another thing to note is if your Wii Remote or Pro Controller is low on batteries the background of this will change from blue to a light red. If the program crashes an error window will appear with some information that I need in order to debug that information. So please send those to me. Enter some comments in there that help will help me reproduce the error. Just tell me what you were doing, what game you were playing, what input, what button you were pressing, anything that will help me reproduce that issue. Yeah, that's when you soft. I hope you found this useful. Um, there might be some of you thinking well, what about the Switch Pro Controller? What about the Joy-Cons? And all I can say is that's being looked into. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of you know, you can, you can use those as they are as normal Windows joysticks, but the Joy-Cons joysticks act as um, POV hats, and not all games support normal direct input devices, and they need X input devices. So a solution for supporting all standard joysticks is being looked into. I would like to give a quick shout out to my donators. Thank you so much for your contributions and your support. I will 
continue to send you new builds for your evaluation and your input. Make sure that your latest contact information is with me. There's still a couple emails out there that bounce back. So if you donated in the past, just send me an email with your updated information and what information you had used in the past. I will never share your email addresses. They are simply just for sending builds. And if at any point you decide you don't want to receive any more build emails from you, just from me, sorry, just send me an email and say, I don't want to receive emails from you anymore, buddy. And then I'll take you off the list. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you found this to be useful. Enjoy.